Okie dokie artichokey. We are back for 2 Samuel chapter 7. Thanks for joining us again for our Bible study. The PDF that you're seeing up on the screen, you can download it on our website for free. And there's physical hard copy books for some of the five minute studies on Amazon. There's also a link for those in the description. So let's go ahead and get right into this. Our timeline hasn't really changed here. When did these events happen? Well, we're talking about King David. He became king in about 1055 BC. However, that was only over the the, uh, a portion of God's people, the people of Judah. He was king over Judah for seven and a half years before he became king over all Israel and Judah, and he reigned for 33 years. Only two characters to discuss here. Well, I guess God is a pretty main character in this chapter, but as far as human beings, we have David, who's the second king over all Israel and Judah after Saul. We also have Nathan, who was a prophet of God, who David had several interactions with, including the events of this chapter. Not a lot to discuss in our where section either. The map is pretty simple. David's house was in Jerusalem, and he had moved the Ark of the Covenant from kiriath Jerim to Jerusalem in the last chapter, and that'll be relevant for the events of this chapter. So for chapter 7, I've got it broken down into two sections. The first section is verses 1 through 17. God promises to build David a house and to bless his descendants, his future children and their children. So David kind of felt bad that the Ark of the Covenant was being kept in a tent while he had this splendid house of cedar, remember that the king of Tyre had helped him build. He suggested to Nathan the prophet that something needed to be done to remedy this problem. Well, that night, God spoke to the prophet Nathan and gave him a message to give to David. God said that he didn't need David to build him a house, not once in all the time that the children of Israel had gone from Egypt to settling in the promised land had God requested a physical house be built for him. It just wasn't really God's priority. God said that rather than David building him a house, God was going to build David a house. In fact, God was already in the process of doing this. Now, this wasn't a physical house, right? But basically establishing his family as a special house uh, in the, the service and the, the will and the plan of God. So God was in the process of doing this. He reminded David how he had taken him from the pastures where he was a shepherd and he had set him on the throne of this, this nation and was blessing this nation. God promised to further bless the nation of Israel and, quote, to plant them securely in their homeland, safe from the oppression that they had experienced previous. Now, these promises were going to extend past David's own lifetime God would continue to bless David's children, and they would sit on the throne of Israel. God did promise that one day David's son would build him a house. Now, that comes to fulfillment when David's son Solomon builds the temple, which we'll read about later on. God said this, quote, And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. That's a really important promise in the biblical story. So, God promises to bless David's house, his throne forever, and Nathan the prophet then took this message that God gave him and he gave it to King David. Now in our second section, verses 18 through 29, this records David's gratitude to God for his promises. So David's prayer of thanksgiving back to God is recorded in the second half of the chapter. David was amazed that God had taken him, a man of humble beginnings, and had chosen him and his family to receive this great blessing that was just described. He praised God, saying, quote, Therefore you are great, O Lord God, for there is none like you, and there is no God beside you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. He thanked God for making Israel special among the nations, giving them this special relationship with him, and showing his greatness by saving them from Egypt and from all their oppressors in the past. David welcomed God's blessings on his life, and he was excited that God was going to use his house and his family for the glory of his name. So there you have it. That is 2 Samuel chapter 7. Now let's talk about our application, one that hits home for me in this period of my life. Here it is. Often, our vision of what we hope to accomplish in God's kingdom is different from the plans that he has for us. David probably thought that the most meaningful, the most lasting thing that he could do for the Lord was to build him a house, some kind of physical structure. But God had a more important role for David to play, one that David never could have just planned out himself, something he couldn't have achieved on his own, and that was to bless his family and ultimately to bring about the Messiah, the Savior of the world, Jesus, through the family line of David. 
So we need to remain open to the possibility that God's vision for our lives may not necessarily match our vision. If we are determined only to serve God in the ways that we've envisioned, then we may miss out on a greater purpose that God has for us or that God could, has, could have used us for. God knows best what his kingdom needs at any given time and where best you fit into that story and accomplishing those things. Give the direction of your life over to God and remain open to his leading because you just may find yourself part of something far bigger than you could have ever imagined.